What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are back with Invincible. Yes, we are. Uh, we are covering, well, really the first part of the last war. This is the second to last story arc, right? The end of all things part one. After this, it's the end of all things part two and Invincible's over. So uh, yeah, it will it will be crazy. But uh, nonetheless, right? In the last video, we talked about how Oliver had basically been killed by Freddie Mercury, right? Freddie Mercury killed him uh, and that Oliver had actually been a spy for Freddie Mercury. But when his loyalty was tested and he had to make the choice between letting Freddie Mercury kill uh, Mark or stepping in, he chose to step in. And so what we actually end up getting here is basically the funeral for for uh, Oliver here. And again, one of the things that you guys probably know over the course of your lives, if you've attended funerals or anything along those lines, is that behind all the tears, there's usually anger. Right, there's usually a lot of anger and a lot of pain, right? And if that's not dealt with, it can wreak havoc on a person's life. And the result of this is that where Alan the alien tells Mark, you know, I'm I'm so very sorry, Mark freaks. Now, one thing to understand is that there is motivation behind this. Mark does have a reason for being angry at Alan the alien, but the reality is that with all that pain, we as people, we usually need someone to look to as the reason for why that exists, right? If we are in a an emotionally unhealthy place, we need an enemy, right? There has to be a person who's the bad guy, right? Oftentimes, we have a very difficult time accepting the fact that sometimes bad things just happen, that sometimes it's not necessarily because any one particular person did anything, that oftentimes it's because of our own personal choices. And so it's one of those things where in turn, a fight kind of breaks out between the two, but it's not really a fight per se. I mean, Alan the alien is kind of fighting back to a degree. He's not letting Mark just beat him up, right? Take all his anger out on him, but he's not trying to assault Mark, right? He's not trying to like beat Mark to make him stop. Instead, he's playing more defensive than anything else. But what he tries to tell Mark is that the reality here is that Oliver was a double agent, right? That Oliver was basically working for Alan the alien, pretending to work for Freddie Mercury. That Oliver had basically volunteered for this. That it was the only way to get the advantage over Freddie Mercury. The That Freddie Mercury had to believe there was someone on the inside. That there was someone there who had allied himself with him that could feed him information for the coalition of planets. And that the reason why Alan agreed to do this was really just desperation. That it didn't really seem like there was a possible way for them to win. Now, we'll also find out there's more going on here than initially meets the eye. But one of the things that happens is that where Mark's dad wants to step in and like where Mark's mom wants to step in, different people want to step in. The reality here is that they're all basically told by Adam Eve, no, right? Like I will be the one to step in and I will be the one to say something. None of you do anything here, right? If anything, all you're going to do is make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan, you're a cool guy, man. But every time you get involved, things get worse, right? So, you know, I, I stay away. And so ultimately, Adam Eve shows up. Now, let me tell you guys something. And if you guys ever been in a long-term meaningful relationship, you guys know sometimes dealing with like an enemy is better than dealing with a pissed off girl. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. I'm just saying, right? Like that's, that's sometimes you're just kind of better off in that situation. And so Eve shows up here, but instead of like simply stopping the fight, she makes a great point here. She turns on Mark and she was like, look, I know you're mad and I know you're really irritated, but here's the thing, right? When, when Mark says, you know, I'm sorry, I just lost control. She's like, yeah. And you decided to do something stupid, Mark. You always do that. You always rush in and you never stop and you never think, and you never ask the question, what am I actually doing here? Here, right? Why am I actually doing this? Right? You always rush in headlong. You never focus. And what this does, and this is a really interesting thing, what this does is all this anger and all this pain that Adam Eve has built up over all this time, she uses on Mark. Like she literally lashes out at Mark and just goes goes nuts on him because it's just nothing but pain and sadness that she felt for the last five years because she knew that Mark would have been there had Mark not rushed into that situation, rushed into that conflict, had he not so quickly volunteered to go with Oliver to that planet where Thrag was supposedly at and try to find him and try to defeat him because Thrag may have been weak, right? I mean, it was, it was one of those things where like Mark never seems to put her first, right? In those situations, Mark never chooses her. And sometimes that's just what the girl wants, right? Sometimes that's what a woman wants, that in a situation where you could choose something else, she wants you to choose her. And that's ultimately the mistake that Mark made, that there were plenty of times when he could have said, look, I would love to, but my girl's more important than that. And so Adam Eve is of course able to sort of calm things down to a degree, but then she starts to grieve herself and says it hurts so bad because she loved Oliver too. And that's one of the things that really kind of hits home is because when you look at Mark's reaction, Mark was angry at Alan the alien, but at no point did Mark stop and ask Adam Eve, you know, like, why are you doing this? It's one of those interesting situations because you basically have this scenario where Adam Eve says, look, like once they calm down, she's like, look, I totally get this war that we're about to get into. It could cost us our lives. We could die here. We're not going to take our daughter with us. She can't be with us because she's not powerful enough. She 
could never survive. But we could very well die. And if that's going to happen, Mark, then we're going to do something. We're going to do the thing that I've wanted to do for the last five years. And when Mark says, what's that? They get married. Mark and Adam E finally get married. And you guys know it was a long time coming. You guys know it was a long time coming. And it's so cool to see, right? It's so, so cool to see these two finally end up getting married, right? They finally end up tying the knot. And then ultimately, once the marriage is done, right? Once the ceremony is done and the happiness is over and they were presumably, you know, doing the damn thing, you know? Uh, then it's one of those things where it's just kind of like, okay, now it's time to go to war. The, the dark side of this and what you end up doing is switching over to Alan the alien. And this is the crazy thing is because what happens here is that he has this kind of confession that he makes to his wife right now. Notice this, right? When she comes out, she says, Alan, what are you doing out here by yourself? And Alan says, it's all in motion. Now Mark and Eve will want to kill Freddie Mercury for what he did. They're involved. They'll give me the help that I need. I can rally my forces around them. Mark will be able to pull in Nolan and the other Viltrumites, something Oliver could never do. And when she says, I know you lost a friend, but isn't all this good news? And he says, yes, it's good news. That's exactly what it is. And he says, the attack on my life, there was so much pressure, I didn't have a choice. Please tell ya, I need you to believe I never thought it would get this out of hand. And then ultimately, that's when it starts to dawn on her what was going on. And Alan says, I knew pressing Oliver to meet with, with Freddie Mercury would cause Freddie Mercury to test Oliver. I made sure that Freddie Mercury knew where Mark and Adam Eve were. I knew Freddie would use them as a test. I I knew all of this, I was desperate, I saw no other way, and now my friend is dead. That in essence, Alan betrayed them. Alan knew for a fact that with Oliver working for Freddie Mercury, that when all, when, he, when 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 the location was leaked to where it was that uh, that Adam Eve and Mark were, that Freddie would respond, and he knew that Oliver would be tested, but he never expected that Oliver would die. Right? He basically gambled and he lost. He lost big. But the other thing that comes out of this is it was a risk he was willing to take because now what he's done is he's given Mark and he's given Adam Eve motivation. This is game theory. What decision do you make when the success of your decisions depends on the decisions of others, right? The prisoner's dilemma, if you want to call it that. That's exactly what this is, right? Nash equilibrium. The death of Oliver will now lead to Mark basically being like fighting alongside them, which is something that he had previously told Alan the Alien he wouldn't do. That he and Adam Eve would not fight alongside him in his war, at least the final war against Freddie Mercury. But with Oliver being dead, now Mark and Adam Eve are going to fight. More so than that, the hope of Alan is that now Mark can basically gallop Nolan and all the other Viltrumites on Earth, right? It's kind of nuts. And so following that, you kind of pick up with this moment with Freddie Mercury and his daughter, where his daughter is basically grieving the loss of their brother, right? Remember, he was killed, like he was he was killed by Mark. And it's one of those things where when his daughter shows a moment of sentiment, it angers Freddie Mercury. It makes him so mad, but he pretends to be okay with it. And he pretends to tell her, you know, I'm so sorry about what happened because he needs her. But it's one of those crazy things where if for no other reason than to assuage his own guilty conscience, Alan comes clean to to Mark and to Adam Eve. Now, the truth about this is that it's the smart thing to do. It's better to it's better that Alan be the one to tell them what he did as opposed to somebody else telling them because what it will mean is that Alan hid that from them. It'll, it'll not simply be just one betrayal, but two, right? Sometimes it's just better to bite the bullet. And when he tells Mark, I mean, Mark just gets angrier and angrier, right? Adam Eve gets more and more pissed off. And finally, Adam Eve lashes out on, on Alan and then actually starts to kill him, right? Like the nature of her powers is such that Alan can't overcome it. Now, Alan's wife tries to tell, you know, them going on like, hey, look, he made a mistake, right? I mean, have you never made a mistake? Right? He was desperate. You know, he felt like there was nothing else that he could do. And ultimately, Mark calls, uh, calls it off. And then Mark, Mark says, no, we, I made you a promise. I will fight alongside you. I will honor that. And then I will try to galvanize my father. And I will try to see if we can't find a way for Nolan and the rest of the Viltrumites to get involved here. The immediate response of Nolan is no, that's not going to happen. And again, it makes sense because he says there's so few of us as Viltrumites left. When I become a king, my loyalty is to the people. And that's true. Nolan is now the ruler. He's the emperor of the Viltrumite race. He can't be reckless. He can't be one of these guys where he's just like, sure, well, I'll put my entire race at risk and it's entirely, it's entirely possible that all of us could be destroyed and my entire race could be eradicated. Like, sure, that's exactly something that I could do, uh, but I'm not going to, right? Because as a king, his duty is to his people. His duty is not to himself. It's not to his motivations. He believes they should get involved. He thinks it's the right thing to do to get involved, but the needs of his people outweigh what he wants, right? It's simple 
radical utilitarianism. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And so ultimately, Mark calls him out and says, no, like your son died. Like your son died as a result of Freddie Mercury. Do you have no desire for revenge? Do you have no desire to see this guy come to an end? And lest we forget, Nolan, you're the one who let Freddie Mercury go free anyway. So if anything, it's your fault that our son is dead. And that's the thing. While it pisses off Nolan to no end, ultimately, he's right right? Mark is right. And so Nolan says, okay, fine. You know, I will not command my people to fight alongside you in your war, right? To fight alongside me in this war, because obviously he's going to join Mark, but I will give them the opportunity. I will give them the option. I will let them decide what it is that they want to do. Do they want to fight alongside or do they want to simply just walk away? And so the result of this is that you end up switching over to basically Mark and Adam Eve donning their costumes, right? Their daughter thinks it's absolutely hilarious because she thinks they look goofy, you know, and she's like this cape. I mean, the cape looks, you know, it's like, I mean, the whole outfit, like really this is what you guys wear she's like so people on earth wear tights and go around and and fight like what kind of sense does that make which is kind of a funny critique on the superhero landscape right i mean what kind of sense does it make right like why can't spider-man just fight people in jeans right you know when when she explains how it is that the whole thing works right maneuverability all that kind of stuff her daughter's like so i mean does the cape make you move faster and adam he's like no girl the cape just looks cute you know and her daughter's like yeah the cape plays and adam he's like yeah the cape plays it, it works you know and so her daughter's like i want a cape and it's like yeah of course you do capes are amazing right like capes are awesome <laughs> And so what they end up doing is basically spending this last day with their daughter, right? Spending time with them, hanging out, having all the fun in the world. Because the truth is, they may never see her again, right? This may be the very last time that they ever see her. And so, of course, once battle formations are prepared, once it's time to leave, they end up leaving uh, Tara with, with Debbie, right? With Mark's mom. And the two of them basically head forward with the intention of galvanizing their forces and going from there. Now, Alan the alien does have a plan, right? He does have a plan on how it is that he thinks they can win. But the response of Mark is, no, I think we have a better idea here. And so over the course of this war, really, we don't necessarily get like all the finer points. Instead, what Freddie Mercury has been doing is traveling from world to world and then conquering it and then basically conscripting people or forcing people to fight in his army. In reality, it's an old Roman Empire tactic. That's what made the Roman Empire so powerful for like 800 years is when the Roman Empire rolled into a territory and conquered it. Uh, there were a few things that happened. One, when you were conquered by the Romans, you became a Roman and that's just how it was right like you became a roman you worshipped in the roman belief system and if you were an able-bodied man you likely fought in the roman army there was no arguing that point now you do end up having mark and his guys who show up on the scene start taking pot shots and are able to sort of liberate one of these planets or some of these territories from the the forces of uh of freddie mercury which limits his ability to allow people to fight on his behalf but they are able to save some of these worlds now one of the other things that happens is that one of the members of his army is actually allowed to leave because what this does is it allows space racer to follow this guy and find out where the forces of, uh, of freddie mercury are operating out of one of the other things that happens here is freddie mercury actually shows up to the home world of battle beast and having defeated battle beast basically the emperor just bends the knee and while his uh his ambassador is just kind of like no like why would you do this like all he's going to do is enslave us the response of of the emperor is kill that man right they kill that guy right on the spot and the entirety of battle beast race ends up bending the knee to freddie mercury so now he's got them on his side and that's just kind of how this continues over and over and over again more so than that and this is a particularly important thing one of the things that uh that freddie mercury's daughter begins to realize is that he doesn't really care about them when one of his sons when when freddie mercury comes back and one of his sons says you know in honor of your recent victory i present you with this gift his son just gets smacked to the side so there's no real concern or no real love for the the members of like for his own children and this doesn't go unnoticed by his daughter you know and it's one of those things where he's kind of where she's kind of like okay so like it doesn't really seem like our father cares about us all that much but because of the fact that the home base of, of freddie mercury has been discovered this leads to the forces of the coalition of worlds launching their strike on freddie mercury's home world there's a few things that go on right this is one of those things that's really really interesting when this happens freddie mercury says okay fine battle formations right everybody strike and that's also because he expected this right one of the things to remember is that freddie mercury has been alive for thousands of years he was the grand regent for the viltrumite race for thousands of of years so he has so much battle experience he knows how to plan battle strategy in one of the most effective ways but this is all part of mark's plan the one thing they didn't expect is how many offspring freddie mercury had right remember with the race that he was procreating with their children grow at an accelerated rate so while it's only been five years since freddie mercury basically started procreating with that alien race the same race that oliver was born from uh in reality all these guys have aged uh, 20 years or so right so they're, they're all probably 
probably between the ages of like 20 and 30, right? Maybe some of them are closer to like 35, possibly 40, but like they've all, they're all basically older teenagers and adults is really what this is. More so than that, these guys are in a lot of way cannon fodder because they're just flinging themselves. Freddie Mercury is approaching this from the perspective of a war of attrition. Just throw overwhelming numbers at them and then try to win, right? And that's because there's probably hundreds of thousands of these kids, right? Just so many of them just launching themselves. The other part of this though, is that for somebody like Mark or somebody like Nolan, they're much stronger than these kids are because these kids' powers haven't developed in the same way. And that's one of the things that Freddie Mercury realized. None of these kids are seemingly on the same level as Mark. His daughter and his son were, but like, that's basically it. And he's lost one of them. So now his daughter is the only one that's seemingly on the same level as Mark. And the response, or at least the result to this, is that when these kids throw themselves, their physical bodies are destroyed. Adam Eve is able to hold them off as best she can, right? Just kind of forcing these guys or, or like cutting them to pieces and so on and so forth. She's able to, to operate pretty effectively, but then the daughter of Freddie Mercury appears to him and it's like, they're all breaking rank, right? Like we've got them on the run. This battle is basically won, but like, what's the cost of this victory, right? Like the forces of the coalition, they can't defeat us here, right? That's why they're breaking rank. Uh, at what cost has this battle been won? And when Freddie Mercury is like, what are you talking about? She says like, my brothers and sisters are dying, right? They're throwing themselves at the enemy and it's killing them. Do you not see the body count here? And the response of Freddie Mercury is, I don't care. The fallen were weak and it is our way to cast them off. Our empire will be built with the strong. We will be stronger from this battle. It has tempered us. It is not your place to question my will or my motives. If you feel such pity for the weak, let me know and you can join them, right? Like I will kill you right here and right now. It's this just this extremely hardcore philosophy of Freddie Mercury. But here is the important thing. That does not go unnoticed, right? Do not let his daughter uh, daughter's pacifism trick you into believing that she's okay with this. But he ends up saying like when the forces of the coalition take off and Mark says, no, 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 everything's cool guys. It's all going to plan. The response of Freddie Mercury is like, they think they can escape. No, that's not going to happen. I will not allow them to lick their wounds and attack us again. We finish this now, right? Launch the fleet. And then in turn, they follow the coalition of worlds. They follow them directly back because then the question becomes, because Alan's not fully, fully made aware of this plan. The question becomes, okay, Mark, what's the next thing that we do? And the response of Mark is we're leading them to earth. We're leading them directly back to our world. And so what you end up getting is basically Nolan, you know, uh, addressing the entirety of the Viltrumite race on earth and basically saying Freddie Mercury is coming, right? And he's bringing his entire Viltrumite army. They outnumber us probably a thousand to one, but they are not strong as us yet. They're basically newborns, right? They're, they're the equivalent of human newborns. They could not pose a threat to like a regular adult unless they want to give you a cold, then they'll certainly pose a threat in that capacity, you know? But nonetheless, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, where it's like, like we can overcome them quite readily. But here's the thing. I recognize many of you have started families here. Many of you have husbands or wives and you have children. You've made Earth your home. And I understand you may very well die in this conflict. So I am not directing you. I am not ordering you or ordering you to assist us. I am simply asking that you consider it, right? If you want to fight, come and fight. If you don't, stay home. And there will be no shame on those who choose to stay home. I was one of you, I understand. The response here almost unanimously is, no, we will fight, right? Like Earth is our home. And if he is coming here, then we will protect our home. We will just like, we'll face off against the forces of Freddie Mercury. And if that means we die, then that means we die. Now, one of the other things that I want to address here, and this is kind of a lingering plot that I'm sure some of you guys would ask about if we skipped over it, is Mark's conversation with Nolan about the fact that Anissa had forced herself on him. Now, one of the things to understand is that Nolan is actually the one who figures it out. Nolan's like, she forced herself on you, didn't she? And the response of Mark, uh, well, at least Mark doesn't necessarily answer, but he might as well have said yes, right? He just, he didn't say no. And then ultimately Mark says like, I didn't tell you because I didn't want you to kill her, right? I know we need every Viltrumite that we had. And ultimately Nolan's response is like, I'm angry, right? Anissa hurt you, but it's difficult for me to process Mark. He says, our Viltrumite strong choose their mate as their, as their right, right? They just, that's just how it was. We routinely killed each other, right? We call the weak. And so according to traditional Viltrumite philosophies, that's just what you do, right? Anissa found Mark as somebody attractive. Anissa's stronger than Mark, and Anissa says, that's my mate, and forced herself on him, right? For her, she wasn't doing anything wrong. For Mark, it was, I've just been, I've just, I'm a victim of sexual assault. And so Nolan ultimately says, you know, the, the Anissa who did that to you, I promise you, she's not here anymore. But what Nolan does not do for Mark is say, she will be reprimanded for what she did. Instead, Nolan's response is, I know it's hard to accept Mark, but she didn't believe she was doing anything wrong. According to 
of Ultramites, that's just our way. And that's one of the things that's kind of crazy is because he doesn't necessarily side with his son, or he doesn't necessarily say like, yes, she was wrong, Mark. He's just, he tries to help Mark understand why she did what she did. Now, the other thing that goes on here is you have the daughter of, of Freddie Mercury, of course, visiting some of the children who were injured. And what's so crazy about this is, is ultimately like they, you know, they apologize for not dying. And when she's like, why are you apologizing for not dying? Their response is, well, because if I did, uh, if I died in his honor, then he would learn my name, right? Like he would care about me, you know? And that's when she starts to realize how twisted and screwed up their perspectives are, that they're willing to die for Freddie Mercury, not because they believe in the cause, but because they just want him to love them, which is so twisted and so screwed up when you think about it. But what ends up happening here, of course, is that Adam Eve is basically made to stay behind while they, while they make their way to earth because she can't breathe in space, right? She doesn't have that capacity. And Mark even says like, if you were to be injured or knocked unconscious, you would die immediately. And with everything that's going on and the sheer numbers, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to get to you in time or I wouldn't even be aware of the fact that it had happened. You would just be dead out there in the battlefield and I wouldn't know until the dust settled. So he's like, I want you to stay here and I want you to be safe. I know you want to fight, but this is not a battle you can fight in. And so as the forces begin to catch up, uh, Mark asked the question. So like, I'm just kind of curious though, like, is there a reason that we're flying so close to the sun? And the response of Alan is we're flying that close because the forces of the Viltrumites are on the other side of that sun, right? They're heading this way. And basically they're going to surprise the forces of Freddie Mercury when they arrive here. Now, the funny thing about this is that when Freddie Mercury gets here, he counted on this. Like he never forgot that the Viltrumite race lives on earth and he expected the Viltrumites on earth to be here. And as a result of that, he brought those beasts that are one of the only things in the universe capable of killing the Viltrumites, right? Of like killing Viltrumites themselves because he knows his children aren't capable of defeating those Viltrumites. They'll rip right through them, right? They would tear right through them in, in the blink of an eye. And so even the Viltrumites themselves are, are, you know, didn't really expect this. They didn't really see it coming and they face off as best they can. But Freddie Mercury's battle preparations seem to be more than they were initially ready for. And so in the midst of this great big huge conflict, finally, it comes to a head. You basically get the rematch between Nolan and Freddie Mercury. And this battle is intense. This battle between the two is extreme. I mean, it's a no holds barred, knockdown, drag out fight, right? It is, it's bloody and in every conceivable way. Mark's facing off against seemingly all the children taking pot shots and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but the fight between the two is brutal. And in fact, there's one point when Freddie Mercury tells Nolan, like, you should have killed me when you had the chance. And it's one of those things because where the fight between Nolan and Freddie Mercury seemed relatively even the first time they fought, Freddie Mercury reveals, I was just leading you on. I was baiting you. And this comes to a head when Nolan goes to punch Freddie Mercury in the head and nothing like Freddie Mercury is completely uninjured. And that ultimately it just ends up smashing the hand of Nolan in the process. I mean, that was assuming Nolan ever even had a chance in the first place. Mark steps in and tries to help Nolan where he can, but the response of Freddie Mercury is no, you'll have your turn, just be patient. And he th literally throws Mark into his children and the children just start throwing themselves against Mark. At that point, Freddie Mercury just starts overpowering Nolan. And this guy never had a chance. I mean, literally it's a headbutt, it's a punch, right? Like, like Nolan does what he can, but the response of Freddie Mercury is like, well done, right? In my absence, you were the most qualified to lead. The problem is I have no further absences planned. And in doing so, punches a hole through Nolan. Now, of course, Nolan moved out of the way an instant to make sure that his heart was not injured. And that, that you know, of course, the response of Freddie is like impressive. You know, move to the last minute, protecting your heart, a lesson you should have taught your son. You know, and when Nolan's like, it's gonna take more than that for you to defeat me. Uh, ultimately, Freddie Mercury rips him in half. Like he literally tears Nolan's body apart and kills Nolan on the spot. With that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. Yes. Like I told you guys, Viltrumite War or the, the, the last war, man. I told you guys when we first started covering this, right? Like the ending of Invincible is absolutely crazy because this is just the beginning. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. Thank you all for watching and I will catch you all later. Peace.